Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the channel. And we're now up to part seven of the Great Farm Cleanup. I'm in my shed at home. We're about to head over in about 15 days or something. So before we do that, we've got to put the last lot of things on eBay. Last time I was over there, I took a heap of photos for the next group of eBay items. So I'll run you through, through some pictures now and show you what I'm going to list. And then we will watch the auctions finish, hopefully with some good sales. And then we'll head back over to the farm for the next episode. So episode seven, we'll be trying to market more of the farm stuff on eBay. Okay, let's run through these pictures, a bit like a family slideshow. Um, so hopefully you don't get too bored. I won't dilly-dally too much. Uh, we've even got part of my finger in the top corner, just like the old slideshow. Um, these ones are actually little cultivator segments or known as floats from underneath a uh, what we call a combine, but I guess uh, many of you will call it a cedar uh, for sowing grain. So I'm going to list these all. I think there's oh there's eight of them. I think let's click through the photos. Um, so I'm going to list them in that someone hopefully can reuse them for something. You could probably weld a couple of oh there might be more than eight. You could weld a couple together or three together make and make a, uh, a three-point linkage attachment. So I think they're better than scrap metal. There's a quite a few of them in a pile there. So we'll just start them cheap and see how they go. But they are in good condition pretty much and uh, they're quite solid. They would actually end up quite valuable for scrap metal. But let's put them on eBay and see if someone can make use of them. Now, the other, you may remember a truck bulk bin that I, I had last time we actually sold that through facebook and this is another one that's been dismantled and dad's used it as a bit of a fence here along the the paddock so there's the, a long side there and a short end and the other two are down the lane uh, there's one that's down the lane and you can see the the bulk bin behind it that we have already sold we only got 50 dollars for it but uh, someone come and picked it up and they were happy with it and um, by selling it through facebook we didn't have any fees which was good and it's kind of nice it didn't go for scrap so there's the other end of that one, and the other side is there. It's really good steel, and if you wanted to make up uh, some panelling or fencing or just cut the steel out and reuse it for projects, it'd certainly be a lot cheaper than buying new steel. We'll probably just list it, this at $50 um, and see how we go. Now we have a hay feeder uh, or a cattle feeder. This is designed just to drop a round bale in and then the cattle can munch away until their heart's content without stomping all over the hay and ruining it, especially important in winter when it gets very muddy. Uh, and it's in pretty good nick. I think it's missing one section's broken off, but we'll probably just put that on at $50 too and see how we go. Uh, now we have a couple of bulk fuel tanks. This one used to be on the farm for a long time with, um, with petrol or gas. Uh, the other one I think was a diesel tank or it might have come from another property, I'm not sure. I think they're in good condition. Oh, that one may have had kerosene in it, I think Dad told me. So they're not rusted out. This one obviously is on a, a frame. We're probably just going to ask $50 each and see how we go. And if they don't get any takers, they can go for scrap metal. Looks a bit rusty underneath, but it should be pretty good inside. Uh, and it's still got the tap on it there. And that one's quite solid. And that would be an ideal, uh, perhaps a water tanker to sit on a trailer. It's got a little frame on it. Maybe as a firefighting unit would be, you know, good. So hopefully it gets repurposed. Now there's a couple of trusses here. In fact, it was one truss and it's been cut in half. So you can see it's very long. I don't have the dimensions right handy at the moment, but um, it might be handy for someone that wants to build a shed. Uh, it's probably limited to someone local because being so long, it'd be pretty hard to take out on the freeway um, so we'll we'll list that fairly cheap too and see how we go it's a bit squashed on the top here because that part was actually a hanging rail for a large curtain i believe this was from the local hall local mechanics hall and the old heavy curtains used to be drawn across this truss from way up near the ceiling so the actual solid frames are quite good that bit's just a bit bent but that would probably be cut off anyway for anyone that's going to use it and now we have some some harrows, some covering harrows. Now, these are off the back, or they would tow behind a combine or a cedar. There's a couple of different sets here. And this little harrow bar didn't actually belong with them, but I just thought I'd group them all together. Uh, it could be easily modified to tow 
a, a gang of these covering harrows around and it might be handy for someone that has horses or something and just wants to spread the manure around or neaten up the paddock um, you could tow this thing behind even a four-wheel motorbike so uh, again it could just be scrap metal but we'll give someone a chance to reuse it first i think now these are some other harrows these are the diamond trailing harrows um, and these ones there's one two three four five and i have another one to go so a set of six uh, dad tells me he was buying one or two each year every now and again when he was using them and uh, they were fairly expensive i think he said he was paying about 300 dollars each and these are relatively unworn. In fact, in a couple of these pictures, I think you can even see the green paint still on them. So they're in good condition. Um, so five of them or six of them, we might start at 100 each, which would be $600. Certainly much better than scrap metal, but uh, you know, hopefully a farmer sees good value in those. You can see there's quite a bit of paint still on that one. Uh, that shows the paint, but it also shows my awful photography skills. Now, this is a meat saw. Dad used to kill his own sheep, and we used to have sometimes a cow killed, and he would cut up his own meat. So this, I believe this was a, a kit form meat saw. So it's a band saw with a stainless steel top, and I think Dad made the frame, and it probably should have guards over it, but you know, you know what farmers are like. Um, and it does still work fine, so anyone that wants to kill their own um, animals and, and cut them up, for, uh, for food, well that's the way to do it I guess, so with a bit of a clean up and some guards it still would be quite functional and that's in the old shearing shed uh, it's just got an old one third horsepower motor on it that Dad's found from somewhere but it did work quite well also in the wool shed we have this old hand crank uh, steel wool press uh, these things work fine, I've actually used one of these to, oh, I think I probably used it to press wool at one stage but I've used it to press up uh, plastic bottles for recycling and even cardboard so they're quite a versatile press uh, and it's got the three steel spikes that you you stick through the bale once you have it pressed down low enough and it stops it springing back up when you lift the lid up very heavy items very awkward to move but once they're set up they do work quite well clearly this one hasn't been used for a long time uh, i'm not sure what we'll ask for that maybe a hundred dollars and see how we go uh, also in the shearing shed, we have a Sunbeam electric shearing stand. It's just a single stand, and this works perfectly well. Dad used to crutch his own sheep here. We didn't actually do shearing here. We did them at the neighbor's place, but um, this one has had a bit of use over the years, but it's still in great working condition. Uh, and I think there's even some hand pieces somewhere to go with it. I don't know what we'll list that at. I'll have to do a bit of checking. It's got to be worth three or 400 maybe. Um, it can't be posted, so we would want someone to pick it up, but I guess I could bring it back to Nagambi uh, if someone was from over this part of the state and wanted to um, wanted me to bring it across and they could pick it up from here. Uh, also in the shearing shed, we have the double-ended shearing grinder with the hangers, the uh, pendulum hangers, and these are for sharpening your combs and cutters, and even though it's a bit weathered, this would be in good working condition as well. You can see the, the hangers there hanging off these little top pieces and that's so you can get a nice flat grind onto your combs and cutters. There's the details of the grinder, so it does look a bit weathered. It's on a really nice old timber stand, which I think I'll sell with it. And you can see some of the plates underneath. And I think there's a couple more in the next picture over here. So they have big emery discs on them so that you can sand... Um, and they do a good job. So, yep, that will be for sale as well. I'm not sure what we're going to ask for that. I might have to do a bit of checking. It might be worth 100 Now, in one of the other sheds in Machinery Shed, this one's a super spreader. Um, it's a three-point linkage PDO drive, and it just has a hopper here, which you pour whatever you want to spread, whether it be super or gypsum, or perhaps you could even, I don't know, if you could spread grain with it. Um, not very old, 1996. Uh, it's hardly had any use as you can see by all the paint on it it's a sylvan brand so that would that would suit someone that um, had a smaller property and wanted to spread fertilizer or something uh, and again i'll have to check a price on that but you can see by the the lack of wear to the paint um, because as this is spinning as the spinner goes around 
the material drops out the bottom onto this flat plate and it wouldn't take long to wear the paint off so clearly it's done minimal work in the same shed we have a cement mixer or concrete mixer uh, it used to have a little two horsepower petrol engine on it but i think it's been converted to an electric motor it's been uh, it's done a fair bit of work in its life it's been beaten up a bit but the tires are still up and it still runs fine if we get a look at the motor, I think an electric motor on it. There it goes, yep. Probably an old washing machine motor or something. Uh, belt drive. Uh, so that's in, in good condition as far as it's still very, very usable, even though it's got a few years under its belt. Um, we might just start that at 100 or 150. It should um, be interesting for someone. Uh, we have another auger. We sold the big, long auger in the first lot of eBay listings. Well, this one's not as long and it's a bit rough. Uh, it's got a Briggs and Stratton engine on it, which I believe works fine. Uh, interestingly, the bushing is made up of plumbing fittings, uh, but I guess it worked. It's got um, the flighting's a little bit worn. The barrel on this auger is very heavy. It's much heavier than you'd ever find on augers today, so it's never going to wear out. The axle looks like it's been made up from an old Chevy truck or something. The tyres don't look too flash there. Uh, and as I said, the engine was quite a good one, but... Um, it hasn't been used for a while. It probably needs a fresh fuel and a bit of a service. But uh, big belt drive too. But it used to work quite well. I remember using it. Um, and it wouldn't be hard to get the thing going, I'm sure. And here's another half of the barrel. Apparently it came from the uh, the grain silos locally many years ago. It might have been from a clearing sale. And you can see how thick the barrel is. So you could probably make another auger from this one. Although I'm not sure if it's got the flighting inside. But we'll offer this as well if the winning bidder wants to add this to the sale. Okay, that's all we've got to go through. We did also have the, the Massey Ferguson header, but we have sold that. And we managed to sell that through Facebook. So that was great. I think we got 400 for it. So um, no fees again. So that's nice. And it's one of the big items out of the road. So I'm pretty pleased with that one. And also the truck bulk bin, as I said. So... Um, without any further ado, I'll get these things on eBay and we'll tune back in, um, perhaps just as the auctions are finishing, and let's see how we go. Okay, guys, the auctions are about to finish. So let's go through and see if we get some bidding action at the end. I've got to say, there hasn't been a lot of activity. Um, we've got, I think, eight items have opened, but that leaves seven, uh, sorry, nine, I think, that haven't. 10 seconds to go on these first ones. I don't hold out much hope for these cultivator sections, though. No interest. There was only no uh, no watches at all. So two seconds to go. Any late bids? No, I might have to consider sending them to scrap metal because there was 10 of them, and I think they weighed about 50 kilos each. So there's half a ton. So $100 is actually less than scrap price. So uh, I'll have to seriously consider whether I even try to relist those. And now we have just under 20 seconds left on the windmill fan wheel. Uh, no interest much either. We've had we've only got three watches. There's only been 36 views of the listing. So I don't hold out hopes of anyone bidding on this. I think I'll have to look at bringing this back to the shop because I reckon I can easily get 200 for it at the shop. That one's finished with no bids either. So not very exciting so far. And down to just under 20 seconds on the truck body panels. Not much interest here either. There's only one watcher and had 26 views. So uh, I think we'll try this one on the Facebook marketplace when I'm home next week. I don't think it's worth relisting on eBay, but I reckon we'll get 50 bucks for it. So yeah, no buyers there either. So three strikes so far. Okay, at last we have some action. Now this bale feeder has just got, been going up in the last 20 seconds. It only had four bids, now it's up to 10 bids. It was at 54 a minute ago, it's up to 72. There are 15 seconds left. There was four watches on it, but it had had about 86 views. So eight seconds, $72. Are there any late snipes? At least we've got something to sell. 11 bids, but still at 72. So someone put an extra bid on it, it looks like 72 is it. No, $82 it sold for, 12 bids. So, hooray, we've sold something. And this Harrow Bars had very little interest as well. There's only been 20 views on the listing. Only one watcher. So I don't expect any bids here. 
I'm not sure what we'll do with all these. Maybe put them in the scrap pile. I might see if I can get the wheels off it. 12, 11 seconds to go. 10 seconds. I don't expect any bids. But you never know. It's, uh, it's much nicer commentating these auctions when we get some action. But it looks like nothing here. Okay, that's a no sale. I'll have to seriously consider what to do with that. Maybe I might try Facebook. There hasn't been much interest in these harrows either. And these are much better harrows. So uh, we've had uh, only eight views and only one watcher. So I'm pretty sure these won't sell. I can get $60, $70 each for these through the shop. But I'd probably rather not bring them all back. We might try these on Facebook or maybe in some of the farm machinery groups. Uh, but let's see. Let's hope there's someone right at the end. Doesn't look like it. No. So, yeah, we couldn't get 100 each for them. I think Dad paid 300 each. But uh, I'll try them on the Facebook farm machinery groups. Now, we have got a $100 bid on these two trusses. So we're pretty happy with that. Uh, there was 71 views on this listing. And there are five watches. So it's possible that someone else might come out of the shadows. 14 seconds left, there's two trusses, well it used to be one, and it's been cut in half, so two at 20 foot, 22 feet, six seconds, five seconds, any last bids, or does someone snag them for $100? Refreshing the page, that's it, $100 bid, well at least they've sold, that's good. And we have some pretty good action on this meat saw, it's at 150 we started it at 100 I think. And it's had four bids, so it's gained $50. There was 186 views and seven watches, so it had a fair bit of interest. There could be a sniper in this. Um, 12 seconds to go. We'd be happy with 150. It's sold. Eight seconds. Come on, we need... Ah, there we go. 152. Any more? There could be another late one. Or is that it? Looks like 152.50. Yes. So that's all right. Five bids. And we've got a sale again. The wool press has a, a bid of $100, which is pretty good. We're happy to take that for it. Uh, there were... Oops, pardon that noise. I've just got a, a film edit finished. Uh, 16 seconds left. I was going to see how many watches. There was only two watches. 10 seconds left. I don't think we're going to have any more bids on this, but that's fine. We'll take 100 bucks. Uh, it's a very heavy thing. I didn't want to have to move it, so hopefully someone can pick it up. $100. Wait till the page refreshes. Yes, that's it. One bid. Okay, I think this is one of our best items. I'm surprised it hasn't had a bid, um, but it may be a little bit overpriced because it is quite an old one, but it is in good condition. The Sunbeam Shearing Plant. Uh, we've got 42 views. There's six watches. 15 seconds to go. This is something that I could bring back to the shop quite easily if it doesn't sell. So I don't think I'll relist it. We'll see how we go. There might be a sniper at the end. Three seconds. Anyone just at the end. There was a few watches on it. But it doesn't look like it. No, no bids. I think I'll take that one off and bring that home. Put it in the shop. Now this Sunbeam Shearing Grinder has surprised me. I think we only listed this at 200 and it's now up to 400. It's had 14 bids. There are seven watches on it, and it's had a few extra bids today, but the price hasn't gone up. So the, the winning bidders put a couple of higher bids on it again. If there's a sniper, he'll have to, um, the price will go up quite a bit. Let's see what happens. Four seconds. Any snipe? So there's not much sniping action happening tonight. 406, it looks like that sold it, but we're very happy with that price. That's fantastic. Now this is probably the other best thing out of the lot and again we may be a little bit overpriced on 500 but it's in great condition and I think they'd be well over a thousand to buy new. Anyway 13 seconds there was only one watcher and it only had 28 views so it's unlikely to sell. That's light enough that I reckon I could get in the van and bring back to Nagambi, chain it up at the front of the shop. One second any snipes. No, the snipers aren't around tonight at all. Okay, we've just had some action on the cement mixer. It was sitting at $150 before, which was the one bid. And now it's rocketed up to $171.50 with four bids. There's still 17 seconds to go. But uh, that's a pretty good price because it's rather beaten up this one. It still works fine. 
and a second hand electric motor on it but uh oh there we go 180 250 205 50 come on any more that's a great price one more i would say people have set 200 at the, oh 208 dollars so there was one rod at the end as well that's a really good price very happy with that one now this grain auger is probably the largest thing we've got in this lot so it's good for the bigger stuff to go this one has had some action seven bids it's 224.50 we did start it at 200 so it hasn't got very high i don't know if there's a lot more in it but um we're happy to take what we get and it will be going which is great so just over 10 seconds 10 seconds now to go eight bids 227.50 this is better i like commentating when there's more bids there's got to be another one surely big snipe at the end perhaps oh maybe that's it 227.50 oh that's okay we'll take that now we've got two large fuel tanks this one at $50 does have a bid it's on a stand it used to be the petrol fuel tank on the farm uh, it's good that it's got a bid we're happy to take 50 otherwise it would be just be going for scrap so uh, it's probably worth more than that for scrap but anyway if someone can use it that's better there were six watches on it i don't know if we're going to get a sniper or not but it's just at $50. Three seconds. Oh, 53. A little snipe at the end. Someone won it for a measly $3 more than the previous bid. Okay, that's going. And this bid has just happened. We've just got a $100 bid on the larger fuel tank. Uh, this one would be great on a trailer as a firefighter or something. Uh, I wonder if the bidder is the same person that's just won the other tank. I guess we'll find out later. So 15 seconds to go. $100 bid uh, that's probably better than scrap well I don't know it's a very heavy tank but anyway as I said we're happy for people to use them five seconds to go there was only there was six watches on it any snipers it looks like that's it $100 but it's sold and the last auction for tonight we haven't had much interest in this spiral out of an old header and I did run this through once before um, yeah look you've got to find the right person for something like this i wonder if i might have a look to see if i can cut it in half when i'm at the farm next and bring it back to the shop because i do sell these old auger things from the shop but i guess it's a long way to travel to pick it up from melbourne people where it is now five seconds to go i pretty well talked it if it's not going to sell so i don't don't think it's going to 50 dollar bid no okay didn't sell so that ends another auction stint guys not so successful this time we only sold about fourteen hundred dollars worth a bit over uh, and we lose fees but the good thing is that some of the bigger stuff went the big fuel tanks the auger um what else was it oh the big heavy wool press i'm pleased they're going because they're a hassle to deal with and even for scrap metal you've got you've got to get a scrappy with the equipment to be able to handle the bigger stuff so we're pretty happy that that's gone more money in the kitty a lot of the smaller stuff i will possibly bring back to the shop and some of the other things like the harrows i might try as i said on facebook marketplace at least there's no fees through facebook so another auction stint done i'm heading off to the farm again early next week we'll start episode what are we up to i think episode eight and uh, we'll spend two or three days at the farm getting some more stuff sorted out putting some stuff in the van and um, maybe finding some treasures so i'll see you then guys thanks for watching catch you next time bye for now